pretty high. Um, and we do need policies uh, before we focus on technology. Um, but I would still like to have more comments on, you know, we, we have got one issue, which is age verification systems. That's one of the key components that can, you know, um, bri bridge the divide between the two, well, I shouldn't say two opposing uh, sectors, but this is one issue that we need to work on. Any other issues that you can identify that might be of, you know, that might create tension between child protection and privacy? Yes. <coughs> Hello, I'm Shreya, and I'm an MBA student from India itself. And uh, I wish to know that, um, OK, we are having uh, the age identification thing here. But uh, what I feel is that with the advent of all this technology, uh, we do not know where the criminal is. I mean, the geographical location, uh, and uh, I I understand that uh, we do get the I, I, through ISPs we can get the clue, but uh, I don't think that it would be sufficient to verify that particular location and to nab the prosecutor of the crime. So, if uh, if you can address this issue, I would. Well, I think, um, I don't know if I'm open to comments here, if anybody has a comment, but there are technological solutions that can trust, uh, you know, um, and then investigators can find out where it originated. It's very much uh, possible, in spite of all the anonymizer software, you know, the virtual shells that you have within your computers that allows you to browse the net. Uh, with anonymity. There are, I mean, that's one of the other points that I was going to raise here. But it's a pity that we don't have, it seems to be heavily, uh, well, we don't have the representative of the other sector who can probably respond. Um, but uh, yeah, we do have those challenges. But to address your point, uh, it's, it's possible to track down, definitely so. Uh, I see a hand at the back, please. Um, I'm Vijaya. Sorry. Uh, I'm Vijaya, a faculty member of the University, India. I shared a I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know. I shared a few things yesterday in one of the sessions. Um, I don't know. This is addressed earlier because I'm late. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, we worked on a project on uh, internet and children, the safety measures and all that. We talk about the technology, but I'm so concerned of one thing that uh, people who are involved or monitoring the children are not aware of this technology. When we just did a survey on the, I mean, contacted the teachers, parents, and they know very little about the technology itself, internet, you know? Even the teachers think that and it's not their area. Only a teacher of um, a computer or a mass uh, you know, access the net and other people from languages, for example, or social science, they think it's not their area. So how do we address this issue? This is uh, my major concern. We contacted at least 1,500, uh, you know, sample which includes teachers and parents. I think we need to, um, you know, educate or empower about the internet literacy, especially the children. Uh, Given the Indian condition where the children are, uh, you know, access the uh, net at a cyber cafe uh, where there is no control of the parents or the teachers and they are, so we need to educate the teachers through them you know maybe children so I, I really want the, this group to attend or address this issue thank you so much yeah thank you very much I think that uh, well I see a few hands here but I will take the question from the gentleman at back from Brazil Brazil uh, I would like maybe to emphasize some gray areas that uh, for us uh, are not clear, uh, uh, I think, regarding this subject and the, the conflict uh, with the freedom of expression. First of all, uh, about realistic images depicting and, and drawings depicting children engaged in sexual relations, uh, the, the mangas in Japan and, and so on, and I think it's a very uh, 
critical issue regarding this, this subject. Uh, the other thing is child erotica, uh, like uh, children depicting with uh, mm -hmm. not properly in sexual uh, relationship, uh, but uh, anyway, in, in a very uh, uh, clearly showing children in uh, sexual uh, situations. And uh, uh, another thing is tales or, or uh, writing uh, materials uh, depicting uh, children engaged in sexual uh, relations. And uh, the, the, the last uh, issue is regarding the, the minimum age of, uh, of consentment uh, of children engaged in sexual relations. Uh, like, uh, I think it's the, the, the in that have different ages in different countries. Mm -hmm. In Brazil, the minimum age of consentment to uh, produce, produce a picture is 18 years uh, old. And um, I think maybe in, in Europe, 16 or 14. And, and I think these four issues for us are very, uh, are very important issues. Thank you, Sergio, for mentioning that. And I think they're absolutely critical. Some of the issues that you have raised, um, well, in terms of the freedom of speech, many a times we have confrontation between you know whether it's um, perfectly legitimate to express your own opinion without harming a child and um, like when it comes to images uh, drawings and manga in Japan it's extremely popular right among Japanese but uh, whether without actually harming a child in that sense but what it does it, it causes the demand to you know go for um, child abuse images and that again has implications. So we, it, it's very interesting. We'll hear from others what they have to say. I'll get Janice first, and then I'll come to Daria. Thank you. Um, about the discussion between freedom of expression um, that we've been talking about, I think this is somewhat an esoteric uh, discussion because we have recently been talking about privacy at work. And there we have 40 very, very highly educated people working. And when we really got down to it and asked each person what they understood and got experts in from the university to talk to them, we suddenly realized that this is a no-go because not many people really understand the tensions of it. Secondly, what I'd like to say is that we don't have any tools, and I would like to see us going in a much more concrete direction. When I look back at education, we really didn't start moving anywhere until in the 80s, organizations like UNESCO and OECD put up standardized instruments so that they could begin measuring where we really are. And I would like to see us moving in that direction because we talk about the problems that young people encounter, but it's mostly folkloric. We really don't have any idea of the, the figures of where this is happening and how it's happening. And it is possible to put into place these standardized instruments. So that's my suggestion. Thanks, Janice. Uh, I'll take um, Daria's question. Oh. Microphone, please. Uh, yeah, it's good to have two microphones, one. <clears throat> Basically, um, I would like uh, to raise some uh, logistical questions. Uh, the coalition is almost one year old, mm -hmm. and so we, uh, I think it was registered in February, right? Um, well, last um, November we formed the coalition, yeah. but it got registered at some, you know, around March, February, March, um, early this year. Yeah. So uh, it would be probably a time to uh, engage some growth. So um, the lady, uh, uh, the previous uh, speaker, one of the previous speaker, raised the question that uh, there is lack of informedness in many development countries and. The, Coalition webpage could, be, could become a, a good uh, sort of um, information resources. Uh, wh what should be done? Uh, what kind of resources we have, and so on. So uh, I, I actually couldn't find in Google the uh, website of the coalition. Does it? No. Well, um, the coalition doesn't have a webpage of its own. 
Um, and uh, last year when we formed the coalition, we asked for volunteers who can host, but there was nobody who was willing to host. But uh, to answer your question, it's not only, well, we, we can engage uh, bilaterally or you know, amongst the purpose of the coalition was to facilitate exchange of ideas, best practices, but primarily uh, to, you know, to bring together the freedom of speech, ex, you know, activist and that we, lobby. We but lost them already. The yeah, we lost them, but that's it, we are trying. We should keep trying to get them engaged. Since we don't have anybody here, doesn't mean that we only, you know, we discard the idea um, that we started with. Well, sure, but they are not here a second time. The point is uh, just maybe we need to attract some funding to have a good web page because uh, until uh, the good web page. Which, which all, with all the partners, resources, questions, research, uh, at least listed or having links to a coalition does not exist online. Absolutely, that's a good suggestion and what we can do is uh, we can probably put up a page that just links to the member um, websites and, um, and then we, everybody gets to sh you know, uh, share what, the, what they're doing rather than creating a new uh, web page. Yeah. Um, I'm Jolly, from a uh, research scholar from one of Indian universities. Um, one thing it's mentioned the need for developing policies. Uh, generally, the trend is that the, that it, when it comes to children, uh, it neutralized with the general law, and uh, the very specific need for having a law for the children. And in a very specially, I feel that we need to emphasize the cyber law to take care of the need of the children, whatever it is. And secondly, the freedom of expression, freedom of expression that is being uh, highlighted from the part of the media people or the adults in general. Here, it's very much needed, I feel, for the children. Where do they go and express what's happening to them? Uh, and what's the real uh, emotional, social, all situations? And um, uh, specifically, not only uh, to, the, to the cities and the semi-urban areas, where there are some facilities available for children and efforts have been made. Uh, considering the, the real situation of the country, the regional, uh, the specific to the children who are getting more and more exposed to internet and violence, and very specifically att attending to their needs and very approachable and safe place for the children are really, they can really feel that safely they can go and report and feel safe and comfortable. And they are being handled in a very uh, respectable and um, uh, considering their all sort of needs. Mm -hmm. That would be uh, one of the big issue I feel we need to have. Okay, uh, thanks for your comments. Uh, Yuta wants to say something on that. Yeah. I think it's necessary to have the discussion more clear because on the one hand we are talking about protecting children from being sexually exploited, being abused, from taking pictures, child pornography pictures. But what you mentioned now was another case that means protecting children when using the internet on their own, protecting them from harmful content and from illegal content, from violent content for example. And I think we, don't, we shouldn't mix it up because these are two different things and we, we need different countermeasures against both things. And so it might be better to have separate discussion for that separate matters. Yeah, okay. Navin. Uh, thank you, Jutta, for your comment. Uh, maybe I share also the same concern of uh, the lady here that sometimes in developing countries our issues is not only the sexual exploitation online, it's also harmful content, uh, the privacy issues. Uh, the, 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 the array of issues that we are facing uh, is a bit different and more diversified. And this is also a concern in Egypt as well. So I would like to join uh, uh, my concern with the lady. Uh, the other point uh, is what Margaret mentioned about the initiative of the ITU the child online protection. And I think it's very important for us to understand exactly what the initiative is, how we can cooperate with the ITU, understand its UNICEF and other UN organizations involved in that, as well as a coalition of about 37 companies. Uh, so I think it's, it's the right time to understand more and to see uh, the, the synergies we could have uh, effectively. 
Okay, and I would like to add one more point to what you said. Uh, well, as Yuta mentioned, there are two distinct issues, children um, uh, being exposed to harmful materials um, and then perpetrators trying to reach them and cause them harm. But the, another growing um, phenomena, I would say, is the fact that there is a sharing of, you know, um, among young people um, trying to enact the, that kind of action amongst themselves, which is another area which um, I think needs attention and needs proper interventions. Because how do you address the problematic sexual behavior of young people uh, who are under the age of 18? And are they being treated as offenders? or they are treated as victims. So what kind of measures we need to, and do they have the right to express their opinion, to, you know, um, uh, to explore their sexual fantasies? So these are some of the issues that we will be grappling with. Um, any other comments? Because we do need to identify some of the areas uh, that we need to bring forward, and having not having the private sector or the freedom of speech uh, group here um, is a bit of challenge. But from um, the representatives that we have today, um, do we, uh, I, I'm just asking if we can identify some more core issues. Yes, please. Uh, uh, I'd just like to mention uh, John Martin's Child Helpline International. Uh, the, the issue that we're discussing, uh, w that we were discussing at first, with the, the privacy issue, and now the mention was being made, b making a distinction between uh, children being reached online and children seeing uh, harmful content. The privacy issue is overlapping those issues. So, um, and actually having, like for example, the age verification. Uh, is not really in my, uh, we have to be very careful how we connect that to the other issues here because age verification is only a very tiny part of what we're trying to do here. Because if we have age ver verification that might stop uh, people of o over 18 going into uh, children uh, chat, ro chat rooms and vice versa. But uh, the actual, uh, it to have only also one subject uh, child abuse online and child pornog pornography being spread online is not being stopped by that because it is going to happen even they actually might have over 18s be very happy to verify their, that they're over 18. So we have to be very uh, careful in how we frame the issues here because saying age verification and the new technology that might guarantee anonymity is not going to help us in any way in that respect to, to protect children online. Yeah, I think you are absolutely right. I tell you that it doesn't really stop um, an adult uh, to um, providing the age credential to go and access child abuse images online or to distribute. That's a completely different area which we need to address, definitely. Thank you for mentioning that. Any other issues? Uh, please identify yourself as well, please. Rafid Fatani, ex university in the UK. Um, I don't know if the panel... Ready in front, and then Sergio, and maybe um, Zoe finally. But I would like to you to be quite brief, because uh, we are almost running out of time. Maybe we can extend by another 10 minutes, yeah? Yeah, I will try. Uh, I am representing the Swedish Awareness Node, um, and I think that as long as we prioritize uh, the weapons or the tools of information, this conflict is mainly connected to technical tools like filtering. And we have an expression in Sweden that I really want to present here shortly. We say it's better to install the filter in the head of the child because, because it will stay forever. Whatever happens with new technology like mobile phones or you change your computer, it will still be there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I'll stick to my previous... Sergio, if you have your comments. 
Uh, you didn't ask for it? A point to agree very much with the problem about Bluetooth, which is, of course, is free and is the main way that children seem to share images with each other in the playground. I think there's a huge issue for the handset manufacturers as well because the uh, GMSA, the, the mobile phone networks, have agreed to block access to images and take the blocking list, whereas uh, the future of mobile and internet technology w w is, with the, is with the handset manufacturers. And at the moment, I don't think, certainly in the UK, our experience is they're not engaging well in this debate at all, and they really need to. Mm. Okay. <coughs> Thanks. Um, I think people, I at least, are getting slowly confused in terms of, I think we're jumping from a lot of different points and we're not really keeping the focus, and yeah. we get caught up in specific issues that might be the turn to bringing progress into a debate regarding child protection and privacy online. And I think talking about child sexual abusive images, there's a very good workshop coming up later this afternoon, mm -hmm. which I would recommend everybody to attend. Look at the agenda. I think, can you somebody just correct me or find the agenda and see what time it is on to this afternoon? I think that would be the appropriate fora to start discussing these issues, and I think you would have qualified presentations going on there. I know for me, Naxo, which I present here, there's going to be a very good presentation. So please do attend that workshop. I think in terms of privacy um, and protection, some of the issues that comes up, uh, it would be very good if you could draw them down as a list and say, fine, what are the challenges that we're going to go, go with? From What are we going to leave this IGF with? Yeah. Clearly. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't possible to meet up with the key stakeholders that we initially decided to meet up with mm -hmm. for different reasons. Mm -hmm. That, of course, needs to be improved. And I think that's one of the key issues we need to take away from here. So the dialogue should start now, not two months before the IGF or the next IGF in, in, in Egypt. Um, it would also be nice to actually have a list of the positions that we might come up with. I know we try to do this and you try to do sort of wrap up what, what issues can be you know, controversial for these two interest organizations. And I think it'll be, um, it'll, it'll help us enormously also in the focus of the debate to have that paper. So that's my recommendation more than anything else. Just to finalize, um, it's in room number two. It's a very big room, so uh, there's no excuse, but there wasn't any space. It's workshop number 31 called Child Safety Online, Measures to Advance Protection of Children from Exploitation. So see you there. And plus there's also a EU Best Practice Forum at 11 o'clock in room number three. Okay. 11.30, sorry, 11.30. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you. We started with the purpose of the Dynamic Coalition and for this session. And uh, we do have uh, you know, some good comments from the audience on various issues. And uh, they were all legitimate. They were all really, really relevant to that particular, particular topic. But as we are here uh, trying to kind of identify the key challenges and the key issues and who we need to bring together, um, I think um, you made a good recommendation here that keeping the, you know, the right stakeholders engaged, we do need to uh, lobby with them, to engage with them, not two months before the IGF, but from now. But as you see, there are not too many people around that we can start liaising from the very moment. And I think it's a collaborative work. All of us who are here should take equal responsibility. It's not the um, responsibility of the coordinator of the coalition or one particular agency. It's the responsibility of all of us, and we should all um, be you know, equally um, responsible for that. So by saying that, uh, I do agree with what you said. Uh, there we are. You have a comment here? The main priority of the coalition should be the protecting children online. Yeah, uh, and we could be uh, more uh, thinking about spreading geographically. How may, what percentage of the children in the world is pro uh, who has access on the internet are protected? Uh, so I think we just need to, to focus more on uh, getting new uh, countries in, uh, to get in this kind of approaches and technology to new NGOs. So we need expansion. Uh, okay. Any comments on that? Anybody raise of hands in support of that comment or no members? Okay. 
Any other people who, who would like to share the same view with her, that we need to expand this and reach more countries in terms of bringing the issue? OK, so I see quite a number, of good number of hands now. Thank you. OK, uh, I think uh, we are almost, uh, we started late. We started 10 minutes behind schedule. And uh, we haven't quite reached that 10 minute extension yet. So we still have about five minutes. To, uh, to raise any other questions, any future action for the coalition itself. If anybody would like to suggest, we got a recommendation of having a web page linking the different agencies, which, is a, which we have noted down. But any other uh, recommendations uh, on behalf of the coalition, what should be our future plan, the next possible action? Yes, Zoe. Use the microphone, please. Might it be worth having a smaller steering group for this uh, dynamic coalition, okay. just to give it a bit of uh, focus and, and direction, and maybe we could we could uh, we could take volunteers from this forum um, to form a kind of steering group about where, where it goes next. Absolutely. Uh, um, okay, I'll take the. She was uh, there at the beginning, so <coughs> if you can share your comments. <coughs> yes, uh, I wanted to to say a recommendation, if it's possible. Because uh, if we link with the other recommendations of other panels of, of the main session, uh, they have recommended that uh, to have to create in, uh, on, on, in each country a cert, a cert in each country to uh, to make safe uh, the um, online uh, for uh, for um, excuse me for my English for everybody. I want to recommend that in this cert that we are going to create in each country, we have a chapter. Perhaps we can. Uh, suggest a chapter for child uh, for the children, you know, because uh, children themselves don't don't uh, they, they don't do anything by themselves. We have to protect. So perhaps we can have a chapter in each country that uh, take in consideration the rights of children online. Uh, I think it will be um, per perhaps uh, useful. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Very much. Uh, children uh, play in the playground. Similarly. Every children on the online world is on a social networking site. We should be there. We should be on a, you know, having groups on social networking <laughs> sites focusing towards campaigning our cause. Uh, that should be something which everybody can take it immediately and do rather than, you know, a, a website needs to be done by a provider and then it takes it takes its own time. Rather, social networking sites can be quick uh, started immediately. So you're suggesting that uh, we use the existing platform yes, uh, yes. instead of creating one. OK, that's a good suggestion. But I have my own comment here. Um, OK, I'll reserve it for the time being. Um, but John, before you, I'll give the mic to Juta for a very short comment. It's just a short comment. Uh, I think we all have good strategies and ideas how we can go on with child protection. But if this dynamic collision is looking for the dialogue between uh, child protection and the freedom of expression people, then w we should make that more clear. It's not in the name of the dynamic collision. Mm -hmm. And except of that people John Carr has addressed in advance, mm -hmm. nobody else would have known from the schedule of the IGF mm -hmm. that this meeting was supposed to be a meeting of child protection people and freedom of expression people. Okay. I, so I think we, we, we talked to some of them, but no one else knew that they might be invited to be here. So if we want that dialogue, if it's in the Dynamic Coalition, we should make that more clear. Uh, I think that's um, what I was going to say as well. Uh, so thank you for saying that. Um, I, I think, you know, uh, as representative of different organizations here, we, um, we do all our own bits in terms of protecting children online. We have. Uh, all of us here who work for on child protection issues have consolidated you know very w well developed um, systems and uh, models and uh, they work in different geographic locations um, the whole purpose of the um, coalition when it was formed um, last year was to you know focus on very specific issues that we thought would be important to address and um, the issue of the freedom of speech and privacy uh, with child protection was one of the challenging issues. We do have you know, other workshops running around focusing on online safety and so on. And I, I'm sure we would have that in future IGFs as well. But the reason, one a strong reason for creating this platform, this dynamic coalition, was to ensure that the voice of 
child rights agencies uh, is heard. Is you know we do get a space to share our uh, our work and our thoughts and. Um, at that point, it wasn't very clear whether you know the dynamic coalition was only for freedom of speech issues or generalized uh, education and awareness issues. Uh, so maybe it's time now to to have some kind of consensus about what should be the modus of our work. Um, yes, John. Yeah, just I think the idea of having a support you, I think that's a really good idea, and I'm sure Enaxo will definitely want to be part of that steering group. That would be wonderful, actually. Yeah, that I think would it would be, be a, great, a great idea to get more hands, uh, hands to the pump. Uh, I, I wanted to say specifically, I think that the lady who mentioned about the certs is a, a, really, it's a really good idea. It's an excellent tactic, actually. Um, you, know, you know, the, the certs are the... Um, every, every country and every industry is meant to develop a plan for dealing with emergency situations, mm -hmm. attacks on their system, mm -hmm. cyber attacks, uh, you know, the electricity industry, the air, you know, airports, the military, and, and the nation as a whole is meant to have a scheme of how the citizens' rights and mm -hmm. citizens and the services in the country will continue. Mm -hmm. Making children part of that and child protection is an excellent idea. In fact, it is part of what the ITU uh, is planning to do with its COP program, mm -hmm. and I think if we were, you know, we, we supported that, it would be good. Just want to make two very quick points. First of all, I think age verification is an essential and vital child protection tool, but it definitely doesn't solve all problems. Mm -hmm. It is, however, essential. And on the filtering question, I agree that the best possible filter for, to help children, protect children, is the one that they have in their heads. Mm -hmm. That will work for a great many children, but it will not work for all children. And some children need additional help, and filters can provide that additional help. Okay, thank you, John, for your... I recommend uh, to the coalition uh, to publish some kind of report after this uh, meeting and after our future meetings, uh, which uh, will include our ideas and recommendations, uh, um, the best practices of uh, child protection and our recommendations to the decision makers, uh, how to protect the children from illegal internet content. And so I think that the coalition also should publish a new document, maybe it will be general, uh, which um, uh, will include uh, the best uh, articles uh, um, uh, on the theme of child protection. And uh, we all together um, will communicate in the <laughs> best way. So. Okay. Yeah, I Thank think you. that's what the, you know, the logistic, the mechanism of the dynamic coalition needs to be elaborated a bit more than, um, you know, w over the last few months we didn't really have uh, engaged um, the way we should have been. And, um, but this reminds us that from now on we should probably have some kind of mechanism to drive the coalition forward until the next IGF. And it's a, in any case, we, we have to, all the members are supposed to share the reports which gets consolidated and shared with the IGF Secretariat. And that's a mandatory requirement for them to be allowing us participate in the next meeting. So I urge you, all the members, uh, to please share your activity report with us. That can be consolidated. And in that, you can probably mention some of the one that you just now mentioned, uh, highlighting some of the work that, that you are doing. It's a small, difficult question. And how uh, how will uh, the steering committee be formed? Yes, well, I, I was going to ask John about that because um, maybe we should do that after you know this session because we don't have much time. We can meet where and when outside somewhere, you know, at the coffee break, huh. yeah, and then decide who will be the who will be the member of the steering committee and what role they will have assigned. Okay, I think we will wrap up now, and thank you all of you. For, and the panelists, I particularly want to thank the panelists for sharing their work and all of you for coming here and taking part in this debate. Thank you. And we have to thank the chair.